What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of How to Become an Art God, where we expose the secrets of all these other amazing artists. So, so far we have taken a look at Kuwais, we have taken a look at Wudup, but today I wanna to take a look at somebody who is a little bit more unique. His name is Ethan Becker. You've probably heard of him. He's been causing a ruckus in the art community. He's uh, always stirring stuff up. He's very chaotic. And he is really a, an individual who likes to disturb the peace. So beyond all of his shenanigans, there's actually a lot of good stuff in his work. And I think, you know, if you're a little art baby, you might be too busy looking into his beautiful eyes and not taking enough time looking at his work and studying from some of the things that he does really well got you there. Anyway, so what I've done here is I've stolen some of his pieces and I'm going to go over some of these to tell you guys about some of these concepts that I think could be really helpful for you art babies out there. Let's get to it. Ethan Becker, you better get exposed. All right, first up, there are two things that I really like in his work that I want to talk about in this video. Number one, shapes. Number two is the way he does the rendering. Let's talk about shapes first. So we're going to take a look at this portrait here. Very simple, just black and white line drawing. You can really see the way that he uses these very powerful geometric shapes in every aspect of his drawing. You can see even the nose is made up of this triangular shape. And we know Ethan loves his triangles. You can see the lips are made up of these triangular shapes with one in the middle, right? The bottom lip, these triangular shapes. Everything is so geometric. You know, I think that awareness of the shapes is something that we could all learn from. Because sometimes I know I forget to pay attention to the shapes in my characters, you know, and seeing this is such a breath of fresh air for me. And now I'm going to show you guys something else that's a breath of fresh air. So he's creating these big powerful shapes that kind of form a bounding box for the character and then he cuts into it with these smaller, very dynamic looking shapes. And one thing that makes some of these shapes very appealing is the fact that you see there's a straighter edge here contrasted with a curved edge there. You're gonna see a lot of this in very stylized animated characters, you know, where there's a straight edge uh, contrasted by a curved edge and then maybe a curved edge contrasted by a straight edge. It just creates a very nice kind of flow in the stylization of the character. Even down here at the calf, right, straight edge, contrasted by a curve. And this is why Ethan likes that triangle so much. You see, this triangle naturally gives you a long straight edge contrasted by a shorter curved edge. And if you look at these triangles, there are no parallel edges in them. So everything has a bit of a taper, just like how everything tapers in the human body. You wanna draw a forearm, it's gonna have a bit of a taper down to the wrist. You wanna draw a calf, it's gonna have a taper down to the ankle. You want to draw a thigh. It's going to have a taper down to the knee. And let me tell you, the shapes don't end there. Okay, look at this character. Look at her hair. Look at these triangular edges that make up the braids, right? He's combining all of these shapes in a way that makes it look like the texture of a braid. And as we get to the very bottom, what is he doing here? Well, some more triangles, guys. Some more triangles. Very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. And not even just that, let's look at the torso here, okay? Look at how this tapers down and then comes out in a triangle to connect the hip. You see how these two shapes, if I erase the middle, you see how they form kind of like the backbone of that pose. You can see the spines right there and you can get a sense that, okay, the legs are gonna be there and uh, the shoulders are gonna be something like that and there's gonna be head up there. Again, two simple geometric shapes creating that foundation for the character. Same thing over here, okay, look, triangle for the upper torso, coming down, tapering into the crotch, and then a reverse triangle for the hips. And these two shapes combined together give you a torso. You can make something very, very compelling with a solid base like this, you know. All right, so that was the first thing that I wanted to take a look at in Ethan's work. That was the first thing I wanted to study because he's so focused on these shapes in his work that I think, you know, it's something that we could all learn from. It's very easy when you get caught up in the sketching and, you know, putting in the details that you forget about the big picture, the big shapes that make up that character. All right, so point number one, think about your shapes. Number two, I love the way Ethan does some of his renders. He really captures the essence of less is more. And I know a lot of animation artists were so good at this. There's one color he used for the light, one color he used for the shadow, and one color he used for the very 
very dark shadows. One skin tone for almost the entirety of the face, a little bit darker on the nose, and only one skin tone for the light colors. You can continue that onto the arm as well. Look at this, it's the exact same color throughout the entire arm when it's in the shadow, and then it transitions into that light. So he's using just two different colors to convey this lighting scenario, which is something that I think is really difficult to do. Look, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm painting something, I tend to want to blend things. I want to add all the ambient lighting. I want to add all the small details, you know, and sometimes I do get a little bit caught up in that. Sometimes it's not really necessary. Ethan's really good at doing this. Ethan's really good at simplifying the rendering. You know, it's just light and shadow, a little bit of variation in between. And all the various forms and small details of the character are being brought out by the line art. This is a style that I'm always trying to explore. I'm trying to push myself in this direction, but you know, I find it personally very, very difficult to be able to simplify things, to say a lot with very little. I mean, you can see the same thing over here. One color for the light, one color for the shadow on the hair, and then one color for the light here, one color for the shadow. Same thing with the skin tone, one color for the light, one for the shadow. It works beautifully. Here's one of his other sketches. This one's a little bit rougher, but you could still see it. Like, look, one color for the shadow, okay? And a slightly darker zone here, and one color for the light. He has a little bit more variation in some of these areas because I guess this one was a little bit looser, but you can still see, like, look at the lips. One light color, one shadow color, and that basically gets the job done. To be honest with you guys, this is something that I want to be able to learn. I want to be able to draw something that looks finished and polished, without all of the hassle of, you know, rendering it from beginning to finish. It's just it's too much. And I think the second concept is equally important for us to keep in mind, you know, for me, for you guys, because I know that it's so easy to get lost in rendering. It's so easy to start picking at every small strand of hair, every tiny reflection on the skin, and just spending hours and hours, you know, just picking at it and not making a huge difference to the final piece. This is a reminder that sometimes it's okay to focus on the bigger pictures and not bog yourself down with rendering the smallest, most unimportant details in a drawing. Okay, so a big thank you to Ethan for teaching us these valuable lessons, but a lesson is not learned until you put it into practice. So I'm gonna try to draw something that uh, uses these concepts that we talked about today. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I've never drawn in this style before, but you know, public self-embarrassment is what I do best. All right, so we're gonna try to focus a little bit more on the shapes here, and we're going to try to uh, do a little rendering for this, but keep it very simple. This is so fun. You guys are literally watching me steal Ethan Becker's style. You know, guys, it always horrifies me uh, when I flip the canvas and realize what, what what abomination I've created. It like every time I flip the canvas, it's just like, what are you doing? Almost every single time I flip that canvas, I'm like, man, what's the point of doing any of this? Now, Ethan's line art is much cleaner than mine, uh, but that's mostly because I don't really do too much line art in my work. So I'm I'm a little bit, you know, out of practice and Ethan's a bit of an expert at this stuff. So obviously mine is not going to compare when it comes to cleanliness, but I'm just gonna try my best to, uh, you know, capture the essence of what we've learned today. All right, so that's pretty good for the face. Now for the fun part, we're gonna do the hair. And if you wanna draw hair like Ethan Becker, you just gotta use a lot of triangles. I 
I mean, this is a very, very different approach from what I would normally do, how I normally draw. So I think I'm definitely stepping out of my comfort zone here. But you know, for the first attempt, I think, you know, this is turning out pretty good. Now let's do some light rendering. I want to do this uh, the same way that Ethan does his rendering where everything is kept super simple. You know, I've really got to force myself not to blend too much, not to add any airbrushing, just make this as flat as possible. Cause you know, you get that itch. You're just like, man, I want to, I want to add this small detail. I want to add a little bit of ambient lighting here. I want to add a different color on the skin patch in this area. It's just like, it's never ending. But today we force ourselves to focus on the bigger picture. Also shout out to Pen Tips for sending me this nice rubber Apple Pencil grip. It's been serving me really well. It's actually so much better than just holding the naked Apple Pencil because I feel like this thing's gonna slide out of my hand any moment. All right, so for the rendering, I'm gonna limit myself to four colors or less for the skin, just so I don't overdo it like I normally do. And maybe two colors for the hair. Okay, I lied, maybe three colors for the hair. That's not so bad. Here's a 30 minute study of Ethan Becker's style. It's always a challenge trying to replicate what other artists do in their work. But to be honest with you guys, it's such an eye-opening experience to try to work in a different way and challenge myself. This just goes to show that there's so many different ways of creating art and there's, you know, every single person has a different way to go about it. And uh, today we took a look at how Ethan does his work. Remember guys, simple, powerful geometric shapes. And when it comes to rendering, sometimes less is more. With that being said though, Ethan and I talked a little bit on Instagram before this and he's starting an animation class. So for those of you guys who want to get a little bit more out of what he has to offer, uh, feel free to check that out. I'm going to link that in the description. If you click through my link and sign up for his animation class, Ethan is supposed to pay me. Uh, I don't know if he's actually going to pay me if he doesn't. Anyways, if you guys are interested, go check that out. We love to support a fellow artist. Be aware that it is 18 plus. So for my little babies, uh, stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more art content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. Wait, oh, that was my back cracking. Okay. I don't know who came up with this system, but it's getting dark now in Toronto at like, what time is it? It's 530. It's getting dark. It's 530. Whoever uh, came up with this system, whoever decided to make it go dark at 530, uh, Listen, this ain't it. Should probably do something about this. It's making us sad, man. Like this is not, it's not cool. Somebody please do something about the sun setting at five. Please. What's up, guy?